What is up guys, Taft Hardington here for another 19's itemization video for Classic WoW. This video we're going to be talking about itemizing a paladin. Um, and there are basically three main ways of playing a paladin. Um, the first of which would be like a healer, an assist player, who focuses a lot more on intellect um, than really anything else. Because paladins have a a decent base healing and so plus healing isn't um, isn't necessarily the play I know whenever you get to 29 plus healing is just pure plus healing at 29 but at 19 it's it's primarily intellect over healing um, the second way to play paladin would be like a sword board pally who is also an assist player but uh, focuses a lot more on flag carrying and doing DPS as it's needed. Um, and then the third way to play Paladin is as a pure DPS class. And it might not seem obvious, but there are Paladins who I've seen who have done um, beyond viable. Like they've they've blown my mind with the amount of damage and burst that they can do as a Paladin at 19. So it is definitely a viable uh, play style. Um, of course, I main Horde, so Paladin, I would say, is probably my my weakest link in terms of 19 class knowledge. I'm not entirely sure of the spell rotation that is really just one guy uh, used in order to do so much burst. I know he would line up Hajj and... Uh, the seals in, in a particular way with his swing timer, with dynamite, um, all these different things combined, and, and he was able to do an absurd amount of burst as a two-hander. So whenever we go through this, you'll see we've got um, the gears kind of laid out where where we have um, like stamp pieces, pieces basically you would use for a sword and board uh, flag carrying set. Um, and we've got pieces that are just for like assist play and then we've got pieces that are like specifically for two-hander and the thing with Paladin is you can mix match the gear <coughs> excuse me in a lot of different ways and make it work for you so you can use you know like mail mail of the Eagle gear and use that in a flag carrying set as opposed to you know a, where you might think that like a stam piece would be the best so I'm just saying um, I'm not necessarily an authority on Paladin but um, but basically th there's a lot of different gear mixing and matching and I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and, and tell you which one's gonna be better for which because uh, I haven't played Paladin enough to to be um, you know to have enough self conviction to, to tell others how to play it but we'll just go through the items so you can see it all. Starting out with Helm, everyone starts with the green tinted goggles. This is from 150 Engineering, 8 Stam, 7 Spirit. There is also Shadow Goggles that you can use right off the bat. 6 Spirit, 5 Intellect. These are really the only two Helms you can start with. And then, obviously, Fishing Hat whenever the ZG patch comes out. 15 Stamina. 10 of 10 style points. Uh, you, you'll get this from uh, the fishing tournament on Sundays at noon whenever the ZG patch comes out. And we show the, you know, the enchants for this. We show 100 HP, the Librem of Constitution. We also show um, the, the Librem of Rumination, 150 mana. And then we also show 8 agility. And this kind of sets, a, or sorry, 8 strength. Wait a minute. I apologize. That should say this should be linking to the agility. That's okay. You get the idea. It's eight agility, and the the reason why we show the eight agility there is because we believe it's better at this level. We believe the scaling and damage from agility, um, as opposed to strength, and this is because if you're going to go sword and board. For your Librem, you're going to want 100 HP, and if you're going to go two-hander, you're going to want to be bursty, and so that's why we've we've 
written eight agility there. Uh, for neck, everyone starts out with the tarnished silver necklace or the voice amplification modulator. The tarnished silver necklace drops out of Zulfrock from the graves. The voice amplification modulator is from a high level of engineering, which is fairly expensive. And then eventually everybody will upgrade to Sentinel's medallion at Honored with Warsong Gulch, 6 agility, 2 stamina. The other two necks are purely um, aesthetic. They don't provide anything. The voice amplification modulator increases your resistance to silence effects by 7%. There aren't any at 19 for classic, so it uh, is, is purely aesthetic. Moving on to shoulders. Everybody starts out with Talbar Mantle. This is from the glowing shard that drops off of the Murloc boss in Wailing Caverns. It gives six intellect, three stamina. Uh, the quest is in nightmares, so you'll pick up the shard off the Murloc boss. You'll take it to Ratchet, and you'll talk to the guy right next to the flight path. Uh, tell me about this gem. He'll tell you about it, and he'll send you to Nara Wildmane, or Sagewind. Oh, follow Sagewind, who's at the top there of the Wailing Cavern Summit, and then she will send you to this is Darnassus, the Druid in Darnassus. I guess that's where the Alliance Scenarian Circle headquarters is at. I know on Horde it sends you, yeah, it sends you to the Scenarian Circle headquarters for Horde and Thunder Bluff. And then we also show the Defender Spalters here. These are just a white item. Um, that don't have a bind on them, and um, we show that for the, the shoulder enchants. Now, we're unsure at this point in time how Blizzard is going, like the scripting that's going to apply to the shoulder enchants, the Saphiron enchants, but uh, we do just list them here. We show the, the Fortitude of the Scourge, which is the Stam and Armor on Talbar, which has Stam. And then we show a second pair of shoulders if you happen to get a, um, a second shoulder enchant. Um, now, it could be that these may only be applied to whites. Um, it could be that they're allowable through trade, a trade window, which would be ideal. Um, and it could be that they create a bind when used. And if that's the case, then these won't be available for 19s at all. So it's up in the air. We're going to see what Blizzard does, how they script it. Hopefully they don't botch those like they botched so much else in the game. Anyway, for Cloak, everybody starts out with Engineer's Cloak. This is 5 Stamina, 2 Intellect. This is from the Ziz Physics quest line, which starts in Ratchet the same guy who uh, you, you do the glowing shard quest with. Um, he starts it, sends you to Ratchet, or sends you to Stone Talon, um, and you go through this quest line. It's fairly easy and straightforward. Uh, and whenever you get to this choice, you might see Draftsman Boots along with it, five strength and five stamina. Those may look pretty good um, for a Paladin, but I would advise not going Draftsman because there are a better BOE option for boots that are male, um, whereas Draftsman are leather. Um, and Engineer's Cloak is really the only cloak that's going to serve the purpose of like assist play. Um, so assist play and also is pretty decent for flag carrying in my uh, opinion. I know some people would believe Sentry Cloak would be the better flag carrying uh, cape, but um, but definitely pick up Engineer's Cloak uh, before you level to 19 just so that you have it and, and you have the option to, to swap cloaks as you want. We also show Sentry Cloak, which is a BOE off the auction house. It's gonna be fairly expensive. Anyone who does physical damage is gonna want this. 5 Stamina, 4 Agility. This could be better for flag carrying. It's certainly better than Engineer's Cloak for uh, Sword and Board DPS. is certainly better for two-handed DPS. Um, but Engineer's Cloak is definitely better for assist play because of the, the intellect that it has. 
it's the same amount of stam. You'd be trading two int for four agility. So we also show caretaker's cape, um, and this is you get this at honored with Warsong Gulch, four stam, two spirit, nine healing. Um, you know, I'm not entirely sure. This might end up being like if you're going full assist. This might end up being more uh, healing than two intellect. Like over the course of a game, I would say most certainly. But um, as an assist paladin, you definitely want to have a, a big mana pool because you can go oom um, uh, fairly easily, even even with your blessing of, of wisdom. We also show the Century Cape of the Bear 3-3 three, three, just to show it. Um, it, and possibly even like tigers, you might prefer tigers there. Um, but just kind of wanted to show all the different cloaks. Um, for the cloak enchant, we show plus five all resistance. This is the only cloak enchant that's PvP oriented. <clears throat> Gives you five resistance to all spells. Really good. Whichever one is going to be your mainstay cloak, we would say put that on it. Uh, we also show superior defense. This may be uh, an option if you wanted to do flag carrying, or even if you had a, you were going like two-handed DPS and you just wanted to stack a little extra armor for when you're going one v one with rogues. Also show lesser agility. That's plus three agility there. You know, just to show it in case you wanted to go full on uh, agi stack. Also show lesser shadow resistance. I believe that's plus 10 shadow resist to cloak. It is an option um, if you find yourself going up against priest and, you know, warlocks. So if you're going like a full assist is why we put it with the caretakers. Because like imagine you're going full assist paladin and you're healing and they've got a warlock who's fearing you. It might be advantageous to have shadow resistance enchanted to that. For chest, we show black and defias armor. This is all around good chest. Good for flag carrying, good for one hand, sword and board, good for two handed. Uh, 11 stamina, 3 agility, 4 strength. This drops off the last boss in Dead Mines, Van Cleef. Um, just all around good and if I were a paladin I would suggest getting two of these putting one with 100 HP and another with plus four all to stats as you can see we suggest the greater stats above the the major health um, just because it's such a good all-around um, chess piece and then the all stats just just play really well with with how uh, we believe a, a paladin should be playing I also show Defender Tunic of the Eagle, 5-5, five, five, with greater stats or major mana, depending on, on your set and, and where you are with your, your mana pool and health pool. For Bracers, show Beetle Class. These are the big Stam Bracers. Um, 5 Stam, 2 Agility, Male. This comes from uh, a decent quest line. Starts with this guy in Stormwind, Argos, Night Whisper, um, and then goes in, sends you out to uh, who's it, Dark Shore. And I do apologize; these quests aren't uh, completely familiar to me because I've only done them like once or twice on Alliance. Uh, like whenever I made a Paladin or my Warrior on Alliance, they're not—I don't know them by heart like I do. Uh, horde quest, but yeah, five stam, two agility, really big there. Mail bracers. Also show fortified braces of the eagle, three three again for assist play. Um, and then we also show of the bear. Um, we show superior stamina on the beetle clasp, just to go, you know, with the with the stam stack. Um, also greater intellect. On the fortified braces of the eagle, we also show healing power on the eagle and mana regen. 
on the eagle. Um, now, obviously, over the course of a game, that mana regen is going to end up giving you more mana than greater intellect. And arguably, plus healing will result in more healing done over the course of the game than either greater intellect or mana regen. Um, but again, it's entirely up to where your build is at. I would suggest getting your gear together and then once it's together, start looking at your stats and start prioritizing what kind of enchants you want where. Um, but yeah, healing power not out yet and neither is mana regen. And then superior strength on the on the of the bear bracers. Those would be your sort of sword and board. For gloves, Defender Gauntlets of the Eagle for fours with healing power. Um, that's not out right now, so seven agility would be the enchant for gloves at the moment. Um, uh, I should have said fortified. The, the fortified bracers are, are BOEs, obviously, and so are Defender Gauntlets of the Eagle for four. Uh, Thorbia Gauntlets, these are going to be like your two-handed uh, two type sort of DPS gloves, eight strength, three stamina, BOE off the auction house, they're male. Um, say superior agility, that's a 15 agility enchant. Um, it's not out yet, so seven agility would be the, the go-to there. We also show greater strength if you wanted to go a lot more into strength. And, you know, if you think about really the only benefit you're going to get out of strength on a paladin is going to be the extra attack power but the ability to block i would say if you're going two-hander definitely don't go into strength go into agility because with a two-hander you're looking for burst damage um which is the best kind of damage in pvp um but if you're going sword and board i can see strength because you're also going to get that benefit from uh, shield block or from um, your, your your chance to block in the amount blocked red whelp gloves we show this here I don't necessarily know if if it would be the play we kind of just put it there just to show that it is something that can be done um, just to kind of open open our minds to things other than you know the the rigid beep bop boop of either just eagle or or that you know you can also do some other things like shadow power or fire power on red whelp gloves, you know, just to um, to keep us open to, to different ideas. Because Paladin is one of these classes where you can do a lot of different things with it and, and make it work. Uh, just depends on your play style. For belt, we show Deviant Scale Belt. This is going to be your flag carry belt. Um, big Stam, 6 Stamina, 5 Agility, 3 Spirit. It's a BOE. Um, it is leather. Show Keller's Girdle. This would be obviously for the assist play. We have an 8 intellect, 3 stamina. It's a BOE off the auction house as well. And Cobron's Grasp. This drops off the first boss in Wailing Caverns, Lord Cobron. He's also the same boss that drops the leggings of the Fang. 8 strength, 3 agility, big really big for two-hander male is really good uh, for legs we show defender legs of the eagle five five and then here's really where the sword and board and, and two-hander itemization um, seem to uh, I don't know, I guess you would, could say epitomize um, on on the legs because each leg is is very like different in in the stats that it has. So if we look at chassis of Westfall. They're male pants, five stam, eleven strength. They come from the main quest line. Excuse me. They come from the main quest line in in Westfall. Um, I'm sure if you've ever played Alliance, you've gone through this quest line before. But yeah. Brotherhood. Now let me look, because I almost want to say like that starts. What is it? Um, the letter. Oh man, what's that letter called? 
Shoot. Is it Dusty Unsent? Um, I'm sorry, guys. Hang on with me. Could be an Unsent letter. Yeah, the one that drops off at Van Cleef. I just want to see really quickly. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> sorry. I, um, I got that and the ring quest lines mixed up. So, yeah. Uh, let's just take a look at that again. Uh, five stam, 11 strength. This would be for the sword and board. And for the two-handed DPS, we suggest Langs of the Fang, five strength, four stam, and nine agility. Um, and you can kind of see the difference here between how it is that you wanna you want to um, prioritize your stats between like a sword and board or like a flag carry set versus uh, a two-handed set. And you see with Leggings of the Fang, we drop we drop just a little bit. It we drop one stam. We drop six strength, and we trade it for nine agility. Uh, this is going to end up being a lot burstier, and and that's really what you want to aim for with a uh, two-handed paladin is is a big burst damage, basically critting. And you can see we had, well we said. 8 strength to the sword and board and 8 agility to Langs of Fang two handed. And then for the defenders of the eagle, either 100 HP or 100 mana or 150 mana. Um, these aren't set in stone. Um, if you remember when we go up to our assumptions, we say for purpose of consistency, we assume it's better to stat stack as opposed to stat smooth. This is situational and depends on your set as a whole. So we aren't saying that that this is the end all be all like way to uh, for for your end chance to go to go here, um, but we're just showing all the different options and and um, we just assume it's better to stat stack uh, for consistency purposes. But you can mix and match and and make it work however you want. Um, for boots, there are. A number of boots. So you see, we got draftsman boots down here. In case you were the type who said, "I'm never going to be playing an assist paladin ever," um, then we put draftsman boots. But even then, we list them at the bottom because we don't really think, when you compare them to silver linked and fee of the link, they just don't really stack. So if you remember, draftsmen were five 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 strength, five stamina. They're leather. And if we were to compare it to Fee of the Links, which are a BOE off the auction house, so money is, I guess, a con if it is a concern, um, it might favor you towards Draftsman. We look at it, 8 agility, 3 strength, pure DPS. This would be like your two-handed boots. And then Silver Link Foot Guards, which are male. They're also BOE off the auction house, but 7 stam, 3 strength. And so I think that you can compare draftsman 5-5 five, five, uh, strength stam 10 stats total uh, versus silver linked 3 strength 7 stam 10 stats total but it is male uh, which is better and it is a BOE so it will cost you gold um, I would imagine like 30 gold or like 25 maybe for these but um, I, I think that the BOEs are just hands down better, and I would prefer to to get the engineer's cloak um, just in case. Like even if you start out believing like I'm only going to be a two-handed bursty, or I'm only going to be a flag carrier, um, and I'm never going to like assist play. Well, you know, you, you never know, and and in my opinion, it's better to go with. Pretty much the only good uh, assist item for cloak um, that you can get right off the bat. It'd be better to go with that than to go with boots that are arguably worse than uh, the BOE options. But yeah, silver length. These are your flag carry boots. These are your uh, sword and board boots. Uh, Fee the links being your your two hand DPS boots. We also show Defender Boots of the Eagle for 4 for the assist play. Um, and then the Nat Paggles, Extreme Angling Boots, 
12 stam plus 5 fishing this is uh, obtained the same way that the fishing hat is uh, every Sunday at noon for in STV whenever the ZG patch comes out <coughs> um, and you can see we've got minor speed on basically all of them I'll show greater agility as like a second option for feet of the links and we also show greater stam as a second option for Nat Paggle's Extreme Angling. This is because when the ZG patch comes out, uh, you're able to turn in. The last boss in ZG is a car, and when you kill her, um, uh, her heart drops. And one person in the raid can get her heart and can turn it in at ZG Island. And when they turn it in at ZG Island, it puts out a world buff that applies on both ZG Island and in Booty Bay. And that buff gives you, I believe it's, it's either, I think it's, I believe it's 10% to stats and 15% movement. Or it could be 10% movement and 15% to stats. It doesn't matter. Either way, if it's 10 or if it's 15, it's going to be more than 8% movement speed, which is what minor speed gives you. And so that's why we show, like, a second option for enchant. Because assume you have two pairs of Nat Paglin's Extreme Anglin, and you have ZG uh, buff on you, which should persist through death until next patch. Um, since it persists through death, and it gives you a better movement speed bonus than minor run speed, sorry about that, um, there's no point of having minor run on your boots. So you would prefer to have greater stam, take advantage of the... Of the um, of the multiplier that the buff gives you for your stats, uh, as well as not lose out on um, on on having like a wasted enchant like minor run, which is getting overridden by the by the ZG buff, the heart of a car buff. We also show goblin rocket boots. You know, it's a mainstay for any PvP uh, Warsun Gulch scenario. Rocket boots are really good. These do break quite often. Um, but they're a lot of fun when they don't. So if you're a gambling man, rocket boots um, guaranteed to get your heart racing. I love using those. Love making a good play with those. Okay, so for rings, everyone on Alliance has got to do this, and you got to do this as soon as you can. Now this is what the unsent letter is from. And well, let's just see the stats here. Four Stam, three Spirit, three Agility, three Strength, four Int. If any item has Paladin written all over it, it's this item. Um, I think I said Seal of Wren. I don't necessarily know how to pronounce it. I believe it's Wren. But let's take a look at this, this quest line. Audience with the King is the final one. Gives you the ring. <clears throat> Brothers in... The head of the beast, the attack. Okay, that doesn't look too long. Uh, the attack requires items of some consequence, and boom, there it is. This huge, huge quest line um, that sends you into stockades, sends you kind of all over the place. It starts with an unsent letter, which is a 100% drop chance off of Van Cleef. Um... So as soon as you're level 16, it says requires level 16 here, as soon as you're level 16, you need to start this quest and complete it. Because it's a heck of a lot of XP, and I would hate for anyone to be in the situation where they don't have enough XP left to finish it. Because this item is so big, and especially big for Paladin. It's a beautiful item. Um, so that's going to be your number one ring in what we're going to call A slot. And we put Lore Keepers as the number one ring in B slot. Of course, it really depends on what it is you're doing as a Paladin. Again, you could be fly carrying, you could be assisting, you could be two-hand DPS. Obviously, this is not the ring for flag carrying or for DPS. This is a an assist ring. Um, but yeah, this ring you get with Honored at Warsong Gulch, two stam. 5 damage and healing, 2 MP5. Um, and I could be wrong about whether or not this is a DPS ring. Uh, so 
Sorry, headset went out. Now, I could be wrong. This could be a good DPS ring. Um, I'm not going to claim that, that I'm an expert on Paladin. I, I just want to show you what all the different options are. Um, but I would assume something like this would be better as your second ring for agility, for strength, to stam. This is the melee equivalent of Lore Keepers from Honored at Warsong Gulch. Or with Silverwing. Um, and then other options would be like the Blood Ring. This is a BOE off the Auction House. It's just a static 5 stam. Um, ring of Defense. Also something if... Um, I don't know why that says cooldown for 15 minutes. There's no, it's just an equip of four defense, 20 armor. Um, it is an option. Uh, we also show Metal Ring of the Tiger, 3-3, three, three, you know, in case, or before you get protectors, maybe you want the Tiger Band. Also show uh, Viridian Band of the Eagle, 3-3. Three, three. Um, I wouldn't suggest Black Widow Band just because it has a negative stam on it, and so it's not quite worth it, especially when you have this option, Lavishly Jeweled Ring, 6 int, 2 agility. This is off Gilnid in the Dead Mines. He's the goblin boss in the Foundry. So, starting out, if we just ignore the Warsong Rings, I would say that you're going to start out with Seal of Rin. And then I would most likely use Lavishly Jeweled with it. Unless I was going like pure flag carry, then I would have Blood Ring. And if I was going um, like just pure two handed DPS, I would go something like Metal Ring of the Monkey. But yeah. Trinkets, same for every class AGM, uh, Minor Recombobulator, Insignia for the Alliance. The insignia you get at rank two. You can buy it off of the uh, quartermaster. Minor recombobulator is a trinket for engineering. Um, weird thing, another thing that Blizzard has scuffed up. Minor recombobulator cannot be obtained on horde. It can only be obtained on horde through the neutral auction house. So if you want to make some gold and you know somebody on horde on your same server. You can pick these up, the schematic for it, off the auction house for 2-3 gold, and then sell it to them on Horde for like 12, maybe even up to 20 gold. Um, I know me and my buddy have done this on our server, and I was selling these things for 30 gold a pop on Horde because it's just not obtainable. Um, eventually, some you know people figured it out. And so then they started doing it, and now the prices have basically equalized. But I would assume there's plenty of servers out there where this has not been recognized yet. So is a money-making opportunity if anyone wanted to do that. Uh, Arena Grandmaster. Uh, this is in basically every Twink Guide video. you got to win the Gurubashi Arena uh, 12 times. Uh, the, the arena goes every three hours. Uh, once every three hours, starting at noon, um, a chest is placed, and yada yada. I'm sure you know about it. So for the weapons, um, same thing. We're keeping in line with the sword and board, the assist, and the two-hander. Uh, there really isn't any weapon better than Shadow Fang for a one-hander. Uh, Shadow Fang is a very expensive item off the auction house. Uh, like right now, I know on Horde on Herod, it's going for like 250 at this point. I was lucky enough to snag mine at like 80 gold at the beginning of the server, and I want to get a second one, but now they're like 250, and it's really cheap compared to like on Alliance. I know they're like 350, 400, um, and yeah. But the thing is. I would argue this is the most OP item in the bracket, hands down. Um, it's just so good. It's unbelievably good. You can compare it to any other weapon, and nothing really comes close to Shadow Fang. Um, it's just absurd how good it is for a one-hander. And it's sword. So, 
if you're playing human you will have the added benefit of a little more a little more crit um, oh and we show life stealing or crusader on that that is yet to be determined for paladin which one is better um, if somebody's like a, a big pally buff and who who's really into you know theory crafting for paladin let us know in the comments why you, which one you think would be better either life stealing or crusader um, you could also go fiery on it um, or maybe even 15 agility for flag carrying but I feel like life stealing would be better for flag carrying I feel like you would get more um, because if you're flag carrying you you should be doing a little bit of DPS as well just to get people off of you and kill pets and such um, Forcer's Axe of the Eagle 3-3 three, three. this is another BOE off the auction house shouldn't be that expensive but this is just purely um, an eagle uh, because you don't have paladins can't use daggers so you don't have evocator's blade otherwise evocator's blade would be here um, but since paladins can't use daggers it's foresters 3-3 three, three. mighty mighty intellect whenever that comes out it's not out yet um, and paladins can't use stabs either so you're kind of SOL at the moment for for like just pure assist uh, I'm trying to think what would you even do because there's no like two-handed sword I'm trying to think maybe there's like a two-handed I don't know I don't <laughs> I don't know I think I think assist pallies are just kind of SOL at the moment uh, if they want to get like nine intellect enchant um, but yeah, this is basically what you go whenever we, we get later into some of the patches. And then the pride and glory of Alliance, of playing anything melee of Alliance, the Glacial Stone. This is the best two-handed weapon in the bracket. Um, it's absolutely glorious. Absolutely glorious. It's so beautiful. I love the aesthetic. I love just everything about it. It's a 3.6 that's uh that's a really good speed for two-handed pally it's got a great top end of 91 and it's got this chance on hit blast target for 75 frost damage um now the frost damage doesn't slow or at least it shouldn't correct me if i'm wrong but whenever i was using it it didn't apply a slow but then again i was also using it on a warrior which i was hamstringing so it just might have not have applied but either way, it, the DPS alone is is stupid good. And this is from a quest line that's kind of lengthy. Uh, Renee's cleansing. Just a little lengthy. <laughs> um, and I would suggest, even if you're, not, if you're not going to do it, still do the quest line. Because you get this really fun item. Uh... Uh, Dartal's Rod of Transformation turns you into this, a fur bog. Um, really silly. I think as soon as you take damage, um, it, it, it removes it, but it's only a one minute cooldown. So even if you're not going to get the two handed mace, still do the quest line just so you can get that, that fun item. Um, if you, you can see it's just a huge quest line. And you, um, if you're a hunt, well, hunters I think can solo this, but. Uh, pretty much everybody else needs help completing it, but uh, it says it requires level 18 from what I remember That's how like that's what it was and I don't see any reason why it would have changed It may have changed, but I mean just check it out at level 17 just in case you can start it But it's most likely going to require 18 to start and So you want to have all your quests out of the way uh, up to that point so that you can do it um, and, and still be able to complete the quest because this the glacial stone man is gorgeous it's really gorgeous um, and we show fiery weapon on that and I would say that's the way to go because you it's the most bursty enchant that you can have uh, you could also do life stealing you could also do crusader although I wouldn't advise Crusader because there's no burst potential with it. Um, 
I mean, you could go Crusader. That's a lot of attack power, but Fiery is where a lot of burst is going to come from. And the thing is, Fiery on Glacial Stone procs like crazy, man. It feels like almost every swing, it feels like the Fiery procs. So, do keep that in mind. And also, with Paladin, you have... Um, is it Seal of... Uh, Seal of makes your weapon faster, whatever that one's called, um, will will work really well there with Fiery since it's a two-hander and um, you're able to swing it faster and while, while getting the benefit of the two-handed proc for Fiery. Um, which, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm not trying to claim to be um, a Paladin expert. My... My theory crafting for Paladin is, is, I would say, it is not expert level. It's uh, amateur at best. So do test this stuff yourself. Don't just fully rely on me when it comes to Paladin. Okay, so for the offhand, um, for Vogue Medicine Pouch, we had a note here, only, use, only if on use works. It doesn't work, so let's just delete that because it's no longer it doesn't work so we'll just get rid of it because the reason is if you want a stam um, a stam like basically a stat stack in your offhand or stat stick you'd be using this gold plated buckler <coughs> with the stam enchant um, <coughs> excuse me so there's a little bit in the way of what to do with your weapons. Um, we show greater stam, greater stam, greater stam. Not always the case. Because um, if we look at Arctic Buckler, which you also get this at level 18 out of Black Fathom Depths from a uh, Black Fathom Villainy quest, which you pick up in Black Fathom Depths and, and you turn it in. Um, or well you get the head from the last boss and turn it in, um, I would guess in Darnassus for, for Alliance. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, Darnassus. Um, you could go Frost Resist on this and it'd be like your anti-mage. But, uh, for Paladin, I don't think you would really have much trouble since you have your Blessing of Freedom. Um. So it might just be better to go with a uh, a weapon spike, or sorry, a shield spike on it as like an anti-rogue shield because of the 642 armor and the, the that huge amount of block that comes with it. Now if we compare that armor and block, it's 3 stamina also, by the way. If we compare that 671 to 9 block, there's clearly a huge, huge benefit with Arctic Buckler 642 armor versus 471, uh, 13 block versus 9 block. Um, so, huge benefit with Arctic. Um, but, going to show gold plated here because it is it is an option. Whether you want that extra 2 stam, 2 agility, might you might consider that to be more advantageous for flag carrying um, or for one handed DPS than Arctic Buckler. Um, but we also show the forest buckler, which is, oh, sorry, gold plated drops off of Miner Johnson out of the dead mines. He's a rare spawn, so you'll have to check for him. And even then it's, uh, says it's a 50% drop, but it doesn't always feel like that. The other option is a BOE off the auction house, forest buckler, four int, two stam, um, surprisingly more armor than gold plated. Uh, same amount of block, but yeah, you would you'd basically use Forester's Axe of the Eagle with the Forest Buckler. You can imagine that, and then um, Shadow Fang you would either use with Arctic or Gold Plated. Um, and we show the Everglow Lantern, the Totem of Affliction, and Grayson's Torch. So, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm not uh, I'm not a Paladin expert, guys, but um, at least, at least you can see the gear, and we've got a little bit of theory crafting with the sword and board versus two-hander. 
itemization. Um, I wish I could tell you more about that, but I am Lokhtar Ogar, Horde main. So, anyways, I'm gonna make the uh, I'm gonna go make the, the the race and spec video right now. So I'll catch y'all on that one.